BYU playing a bit of a Pac-12 schedule here in September with three consecutive games against that conference, including uh, Saturday's tilt at home against UCLA. We bring in Mike Recolato from Gojo Bruin to help us talk about the Bruins as he typically does. Mike, it's always a pleasure to have you on here. Uh, you're off to a one-in-one -one start, a rough game at uh, Texas A&M. Got down early, made a great comeback, couldn't complete the deal in overtime. Then you get the three-touchdown win against UNLV. So as we head to another tough opponent uh, out of conference, uh, just kind of your thoughts about the Bruins to date, uh, your thoughts uh, from the standpoint of what you're concerned about through two games, but also some bright spots. Um, well, first off, thanks for having me back on, Mark. Um, the thing with UCLA, a lot of hope going into this season. Uh, one of the things that is standing out is how, you know, uh, how inconsistent Josh Rosen is right now. You know, he's, he, as you said, he had, he led a, a wonderful comeback uh, in the fourth quarter of against uh, Texas A&M. He was a little bit better against UNLV through four, I believe it was 399 yards, uh, but only had one touchdown. Uh, still isn't connecting with his receivers, a little bit inaccurate, but at the same time, some of his receivers uh, are just, uh, there's no go-to guy uh, in the receiving core. Um, the rushing game looks pretty good. So, so Jamabo is just, tearing it up right now and he's definitely gotten the uh, starting uh, lead uh, back position uh, but also Bolo Oleron Fumni is uh, helping out and he he recently got his first touchdown uh, as a UCLA Bruin um, and I, but yeah he got uh, he also got a second touchdown so it's good production from them um, the one of the big questions question marks is that Nate Starks uh, a guy who was a backup to Paul Perkins last year uh, he hasn't seen time on the field yet, and no one knows exactly why. He didn't travel to Texas A&M, so hopefully he plays this week. But uh, UCLA also has two young freshmen in Jalen Starks and uh, Brandon Stevens who are doing really well. Mm -hmm. uh, they, got, they got some time during the UNLV game because um, – you know, if, if they're going to be the running backs of the future, uh, Kennedy Palomalu, the offensive coordinator, wants them to get as much experience as possible. And seeing as no, UNLV wasn't exactly a cupcake, as we saw, they real, they put up a really good fight against UCLA. But uh, they it was it was good time for those two freshmen to uh, to uh, get some playing time. On the defensive side, it's a little bit of a question mark right now because the run defense, which was not great last year is uh, still showing a little bit of uh, you know trouble right now so it's it's interesting to see what's going to happen with that and with a couple injuries uh, on the defensive line um it's going to be as i said it's going to be inter interesting to see how ucla uh goes up against uh, byu and other you know power uh running teams yeah, we'll stay right there, Mike, with the analysis. Uh, Taysom Hill, uh, one of the better running quarterbacks in the sport. Uh, Jamal Williams, uh, a top running back. Uh, I found it interesting in talking to somebody the other day that uh, this is the fourth year that Hill has been the starting quarterback on opening night and Jamal Williams, the starting running back together. But it hasn't been four consecutive years. They've they've been injured. They've redshirted. They've been back and forth. But they've had long careers there at uh, BYU. And Jamal Williams hit up a very difficult Utah defense for 176 yards on the ground last week. So from a running standpoint, these two guys are going to bring it, and UCLA is going to have to be up to the challenge. The thing with UCLA's uh, run defense is that um, it's it's a little bit questionable right now. It was a, a huge issue last year, and uh, the defensive coordinator, Tom Bradley, tried to make some adjustments to the 4-3 uh, in the offseason, but there just doesn't seem to be, you know, uh, much change right now. And the thing is, there's there's some injuries on, on the defensive line. Uh, Eddie Vanderdo strained his knee uh, in during the uh, UNLV game, which scared a lot of people because he, in, he, was, he injured his knee uh, last season uh, in the first game uh, of the year and was out for the season. Luckily, it was a different knee, and he said he was he's good to go. So that's that's good for the middle of the line. Uh, the other two injuries, um, Deion Hollins had concussion-like symptoms uh, from fall camp, and uh, Tackers McKinley uh, had a groin injury in fall camp and I guess re-aggravated it during the Texas A&M game. So they pass rushers now that, that uh, is, is a relief uh, that would help uh, UCLA because they're definitely going to need to contain uh, – 
Taysom Hill, who's a dual threat quarterback. Currently, he's second on on BYU with most uh, second most rushing yards and has uh, two touchdowns uh, on the ground, which is the most for the team. Uh, they also have to watch out for uh, Jamal Williams, who he's he's a fast, strong, you know, smart back. And you know, if if they look at any game tape of UCLA. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if, if if the call was to just go straight at the defensive line because uh, the, the Bruins have been a little bit weak there, and for some reason they just can't stop the run going up the middle. Hopefully that changes. UCLA makes some adjustments and makes sure that uh, everything you know going right right down the middle is um, you know it, it, that the, that they're going to plug some holes and you know really try to contain the run. Mike, if I'm running the show at BYU, no disregard for Taysom Hill. He's blown out his knee twice. He's been great to come back from it. He's a very effective runner. He's not Michael Vick, though. He's an effective runner. He's really good on the go, but he is not a good passer. He's a he's a decent passer. I'm playing Tanner Mangum, the kid that played last year, uh, that basically got back from his mission, hopped off the plane, and beat Nebraska and Boise State out of the shoot and threw tw 23 touchdowns. He's sitting on the bench. He's the better passer. I'm throwing the ball downfield and letting Jamal Williams run the ball. But that's me if I'm running the BYU offense. All right, uh, let's talk about your offense facing this BYU defense that – we think of BYU throwing the ball and scoring points and doing all those things offensively, but defensively, this has been a Cougars team that held an Arizona team that's used to scoring to 16 points in a last-second victory. Then they go to Utah and hold the Utes to 20 points and turn them over six times. So it's going to be a challenge moving the ball and scoring points against BYU's defense. One of the guys that they have to uh, be aware of on defense is linebacker, um, and I'm going to Butch, his name, um, <laughs> Butch Pau, Pau, um, just, a, you know, really, really tough guy. Um, and, you know, it's very smart and he just wants to get after the ball. So the Bruins, uh, probably stay away from him, but, uh, if anything, you know, UCLA has, um, you know, they still have Josh Rosen who, uh, you know, has a really good arm. Uh, he's, he hasn't really been, um, uh, proud of his last two performances. So, uh, especially going into BYU, I expect him to have a really big game. Uh, the only problem is, as I mentioned before, is that the receivers, there, there really isn't a go-to receiver, although uh, UCLA is passing the ball around a lot. I believe that they threw the ball to 15 players uh, in the UNLV game, so they have a lot of weapons. It's just there's no one single guy who, uh, who who's standing out to, to, to be the go-to receiver. On, on the ground, UCLA has so many options. Uh, with this, you know, they had two freshmen play who, who, are, who are really good and they're going to be very good in, in the future. But I think that with this game uh, coming up, uh, they might stick to their three-headed monster of, of uh, Soso Jamabo, Bolo Olorunfumi, and uh, Nate Starks. Uh, because, you know, the, the Cougar defense is, is uh, pretty good and the Bruins have a lot of weapons. Uh, you know, Soso, he's a speedster. Uh, Nate Starks is is the uh, bulldozer, and Bolu is a combination of, of both of them. And one thing that UCLA really can't do right now, they, they're trying to switch to uh, some power formations, but they just can't seem to run it up the gut. When they run it to the side, you know, th things start happening for them. So it's going to be uh, interesting to see how Kennedy Palomalu, the offensive coordinator, uh, you know, plans out this game. Um, but as I said, you know, they have uh, the, op you know, different options in the passing game and, uh, and in the running game. But I, I think they're going to look to pound the ball and, you know, especially to try to prove that they can uh, play some power offense, uh, especially against, you know, uh, a defense like BYU. Yeah. You mentioned uh, Josh Rosen spreading out the football, Kenneth Walker and Eldridge uh, Massington, both with seven receptions lead the team. Nobody has 10 catches through two games and a ton of guys have at least two or three receptions. Uh, Ishmael Adams, obviously a guy that we talked about a number of times in the off season, switching from defense to offense, five catches, 51 yards through two games. Uh, interesting to note that because of a couple of personal fouls in the secondary in the third quarter of the BYU Utah game, uh, Kai Nakua and Austin McChesney will miss the first half. And that could uh, well, be of benefit, obviously, to UCLA, not just in the passing game, but a couple of guys that uh, come up and support the run 
for BYU. So this is a game, obviously, as you know better than I do, last year that Josh Rosen ran into some rough stretches for the first time in his collegiate career. He weathered the storm, led a late drive. You got out of the Rose Bowl with a W against uh, this BYU team, 24-23. Uh, what's the feel for this one? Uh, there, there's been some question marks with the diff with different parts of the team. You know, Rosen being a little bit inaccurate, uh, the defense not able to uh, stop the run. But you know, on, on the other side of the field, you know, BYU hasn't had the most stellar uh, game either. I mean, they they were in a you know a battle till the end with Arizona, and then uh, you know that game against Utah. There were turnovers. There were penalties. For lack of a better word, that game was wacky. <laughs> but at the same time, it was a rivalry game, so there was a lot of emotion in it. And you know, you you talked about the two uh, uh, players that were ejected uh, in between that, and th those were on back-to-back -back plays. In between that, uh, uh, was it? What's his name? Kal uh, Kalani Sataki, the new uh, BYU head coach. Uh, he was protesting that first targeting call. He was a little bit too emotional. He went out in the field and he got an unsportsmanlike conduct. So, you know, that game was full of emotion. Um, I think it'll be the same. Um, you know, you know, UCLA is it doesn't mean to uh, BYU as much as Utah does, but playing off of last year, uh, BYU is definitely going to look for a, a victory. But at the same time, UCLA knows that they can beat this team, so they're going to be looking to have uh, to get a win. Uh, you know, uh, and a, a win on the road, you know, and especially, you know, a win, a win against a, a very good team, especially after their last two performances. Now, I don't think that either team is going to, uh, I, I think they'll improve a little bit. They're, they're making changes to, uh, to strengthen their game, but I don't think they're going to come out, you know, uh, and, and dominate, uh, you know, you know, e uh, either part of the game. It might be a little sloppy. It'll it'll be a dogfight, I'm sure. But it, if if anything, I, I'm sure it's going to be really fun. Um, I just hope you know I, I have enough hair left on my head, you know, to not pull it out. Um, just because you know, just little things that the Bruins are doing. If they could just fix uh, fix that, make some tweaks, uh, they could be a really really good team. But I think they might be a couple games away from that. So right now, this is going to be a good. Um, it's definitely going to be a good be a good fight. Mike, I'm guessing you already pulled out some hair during that overtime game at uh, Texas A&M. So oh. UCLA won the uh, the game at the Rose Bowl, as I mentioned, over uh, BYU last year by a point. They opened this game as a one-point favorite, according to Vegas. Uh, the Lions jumped to about three points, uh, even though the game's on the road in Provo, a very difficult place to play. Mm -hmm. Mike Regalado from uh, Gojo Bruin helping us break down UCLA traveling to BYU. Thanks a lot, Mike. Thank you, Mark.